obviously we're in the fantastic Echo building, which many people will be familiar with on Richmond Hill. But the Echo didn't start here, did it? Tell me where it started. Yeah, it started in 1900 in Holdenhurst Road. And then in 1907, it moved down to a building that most people will probably remember as being Bath Travel for years on the, the corner of, of Albert Road and uh, Old Christchurch Road here in, in the town centre. And then January 1934, this big moment where it moved into this new and very glamorous purpose-built uh, headquarters on Richmond Hill. The fascinating history of it includes uh, references to Tutankhamun and the Valley of the Kings, bizarrely. So uh, what do you know about that? Yeah, because this is um, an Art Deco building, it's one of Bournemouth's, you know, several brilliant Art Deco buildings. And that movement was kind of influenced uh, in large part by the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb, which had taken place a few years before. And that kind of influenced this idea that uh, buildings were often kind of sand colored. Uh, this one was made from half a million bricks and then all this uh, all this sand colored uh, stone was transported to, to Richmond Hill. So it kind of took some of the Egyptian themes in its in its architecture. And it combined those also. I mean, the other big influence on Art Deco was the kind of heyday of ocean liners and so on, which is uh, reflected, if you take a look around this building, in the, in the, the curved corners uh, and the kind of balconies upstairs and so on. They all give the slight impression of, of, of an ocean liner. We became involved in the Echo building in 2017. The appeal was the obvious use of space and the amazing architecture within inside it. There is an awful lot of original feature. We are enthusiastic about older property and rejuvenating and bringing back modern uses into older buildings. It's very much the ethos behind where we are and why we were set up. We've had a great success of, of using the Echo heritage to successfully create a great environment. And, and that we're very proud of what we've done. We have members on site who are small startups, creative, collaborative, one-man band operations, who've moved out of the dining table into a space where they find that the um, collaborative element is more conducive to more productivity, and the space itself lends them to network naturally and meet other clients, which is great. From companies who are dealing with European Space Agency to tracking tornadoes across the US for insurance purposes, there's a lot of uh, online digital technology, Less creative in the traditional sense, but more digital and future thinking. Some companies who are involved in brand management, as well as companies who are involved in more traditional direct sales. When I spend time here and I see the people using the space, you know, they look like they enjoy being here, which is great. It will always be the Echo Building to us and um, to everybody else. And I, I think that probably tells the tale. The, the Echo has been the community paper for Bournemouth and, and a little, little bit further afield as well for 121 years, which is a long time. Tell me, what, what is your th thought of, a, of what is, a, what is a, a community paper? Yeah. Well, I guess above anything else, it's really about just being in the community and moving in that community and meeting people and, and reporting on the everyday events as much as the, as, as the big kind of front page stuff. So it's, it's kind of having your your roots and your feet in that community as as much as you can and I mean I suppose these days that is not just moving about physically and being at the event it's also about being present with people online so that you're you're actually engaging on you know in that in that new way but but yeah it's kind of about being everywhere and, and being understanding what the community is is kind of thinking and feeling and what issues uh, they're concerned about so that you can then run you know, campaigns and pick the stories that are most going to, to interest them. I guess there's also the issue of holding people to account, local councils, a health service, police. So that's that scrutiny role, that, yeah. that's really important, isn't it, in a local paper? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're kind of the only people to do that a lot of the time. You know, uh, most, most people have uh, other things to do than go along to a council meeting or be at uh, you know, the meetings of health bodies or courts or so on. That's kind of our job to be the eyes and ears of the public on those things. And to, you know, you never want to gratuitously give public bodies a hard time, but you need to be there uh, reporting on what they do and challenging them 
then when it when it needs to be done. But also just you know just just the, the fact that what they do should be in public and should be conveyed to the public is the important thing. And then of course there's there's the charity dimension. I mean I think you and I can both remember really amazing campaigns that that we've run to raise money to raise pr the profile of really good causes and that and that's that's at the heart of what a community paper is as well isn't it yeah uh, you know a lot of that is just about kind of amplifying the good work that's going on in the community so we've been able to give a boost to things like the jigsaw appeal the ladybird appeal uh, fundraising for victoria education center things like that you know none of which you know can we take the credit for getting it off the the ground that was other people's hard work but what we're able to do is give that a platform and reach uh, you know, a much wider audience to boost those those efforts, and the same goes for you know many many smaller scale things to for for, for individual families uh, in in need that we've been able to to raise their uh, their difficulties and and help their fundraising efforts as well. And there are many many people who come to us with their difficulties. You know, some of it is resolved almost before the story comes out because suddenly they've spoken to the echo things are getting taken a little bit more seriously if we're interested in in highlighting it and so you know there are just injustices kind of bureaucratic delays and frustrations things that uh, that that our attention helps helps people resolve we know that newspaper sales for all, all papers you know across the world have gone down in the last few years with the rise of the internet but one thing you can say about publishing and certainly as far as the echo is concerned the audience for what we do has never been bigger tell me a little bit about that yeah well that's certainly true that we've got probably more readers now than we ever had in the days even of kind of mass circulation newspapers you know and in some ways we do the same things but in a different form you know in the old days the paper would come out multiple times a day with different editions at different um points of the day and for different areas well kind of the the web has taken the place of that so now we can update the news on the internet as many times a day as we like it's like having a, an infinite number of uh, editions on any one day um, and also the the immediacy of things you know it used to be that uh, back in the day people would literally queue up on Richmond Hill to get their echo on a Saturday afternoon to see sports results or, or whatever that, that, that was a, a thing you know in, in, in decades ago um, and we do the same thing online really and the figures just kind of show that uh, that that audience gets bigger and bigger and you reach particularly with the, the big big stuff you suddenly reach a huge number of people and probably more than we ever did before so a few years ago, Darren, people were, some people were predicting, you know, the end of local, local media, local newspapers. Um, but that hasn't been the case. We've talked about audience being bigger than ever. Um, give me your perspective on, on, on that. Yeah, I think people were sort of suggesting that a few years ago. And there's this sort of slightly cynical view that papers were, you know, dead tree media and all that. Um, but I think two things. Firstly, people still, many people still love the experience of the printed paper and like an object they can, they can cut around and, and read at their, at their leisure. But, but also, I suspect with so many news channels and so much information coming at people from social media and so on, having that trusted brand is just becoming more and more important. And let me ask you about the pandemic, a, a massively challenging time for everybody. How has that been for news gathering? Yeah, we, I think we probably felt the weight of kind of responsibility to firstly to communicate things clearly uh, as clearly as we could to the public and let them know what was going on uh, around them at a time when most people were confined to their homes but um, but 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 also to understand how they were reacting to it and the concerns about uh, you know what was going to happen to their jobs their health their their livelihoods and so to be to be on top of that for them and you know I think we all perhaps felt it as a as responsibility as as well you know if you if you um, wake up and learn that 200 people in your community have lost their jobs or whatever that's that's you know that, that's not something that we treat cynically it, it, it matters to us because you know we live and work in those same communities how important is trust in the local media yeah I think it's important because even in a world of 
information overload with so many people bringing you news and opinion and so on all day long. You know, that Daily Echo brand and that masthead, even though more people look at it now as, as the, at the top of a website than at the top of a newspaper, that carries a certain authority, should carry a, a certain authority, and it's our job to make sure that we we earn that that trust. So, so you know, our objective all the time is to be impartial, to be accurate, and also to be relevant and entertaining, and, and actually bring people the things that they need or are interested in. So, so we take it seriously, and the, the we, you know we may be an online brand, but we've got 121 years of of history. So, uh, so, so we're very conscious of that tradition and still being part of that.